Brothers and sisters, our time of confession is prompted by Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 35, in which we read these words. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possession, but everything they owned they held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, the church in its physical manifestation doesn't always look the same in every time and in every place. It looks different. We see, we see even in Acts that the church here holds everything in common, but later on that is abused. We read that with Ananias and Sapphira, right? And we also read that eventually it comes to be that not everybody uh, remains not needy, but rather some are being taken care of better than others. And so the apostles appoint deacons to help rectify that problem. And so even that early church, though in here it is, it is beautiful, but that moment, that moment in time of that unity and that sharing in compassion and love and the excitement of the gospel only lasts a, a moment. And then our sin creeps up and our selfishness creeps up and our ambition creeps up and, and our, our carelessness and our callousness creeps up. And so let us take some time to confess before the Lord regarding our lives together as Christ followers. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we confess, O oh God, that in this little tidbit of, of Scripture, this section of Scripture, we see in Acts a beautiful, beautiful picture. But we also, O oh God, can identify with how, with how, just like for the Acts church, the wheels sort of fell off on that to some degree. And we confess, oh God, that, that right now with COVID and physical distancing, right now with the society in which we live, it is so hard for us to live in that kind of unity. And so, Lord, we ask your forgiveness. We hear your prayer, Jesus, that, that you prayed that, that we and, and we would be one with one another, that the church would be one just as you, Christ, and the Father are one. And so, Lord, during this time of quiet, silent prayer, we lay before you the ways in which we have been selfish self-centered, where we have not uh, given generously. We know that it doesn't have to look exactly the same as it does in this Acts 4 church, but we know too that we have not always given of ourselves in oneness and unity as you would desire us to do. And so as we take some time to poke around and lay before you. May the Holy Spirit inspire us to show us our own selfishness, that we may confess 
and repent and be united. Thank you for hearing our prayers, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our words of assurance come from Psalm 133, because there we see a little evidence again of how it is possible and real for Christ followers to live in unity. And the truth is that we here in Athens Christian Reformed Church, though we, just like every other Christ follower on the planet, we are not perfect, but nonetheless, God has blessed us with a great deal of unity and a great deal of, of community and a great deal of love for one another. And we can be so grateful for that. Listen to what Psalm 133 says. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the, or the Lord ordained his blessing forevermore. Let us praise the Lord our God, who inspires us and equips us to grow in living in unity. <laughs>